Okay, hold on my dear friend, just tell me. Did you like this tabletop clip? And if it's so, then don't switch because right now I'll tell you how it was created, on which camera it was shot and what light and props were used uh, for this. I'm Henry Resbegaf and this is my YouTube channel. Okay, I'll be honest with you, this is not a commercial video, I shot it on my own initiative and Summersby didn't order this shoot from me. I chose this drink because of its pretty exterior design. I already had experience working with different liquids, but I had never shot a similar product in a bottle. So I decided to close this question and gain practical experience in shooting a similar product. After all, this will be useful for me in the future already and paid commercial projects. The main task in this video for me was to shoot two tricky takes around which there will be several simpler opening and closing takes. The first tricky shot is uh, when the liquid blows up from the neck of the bottle and knocks out the lid. And the second one where the blueberries go through a splash of water. Based on the colors of the product and its packaging, I chose two nearby colors for the background. But a little bit different, so that uh, product does not merge with the background itself. This is the usual Oracle bot at the advertising agency, which had to be glued to the plastic uh, base from home whatever. At the bottom, I used black acrylic. I worked with it for the first time and got that it's very gentle material that needs constant care. It instantly becomes electrified and draws all the dust in the room itself. And half a kilo of blackberries complete this list of the used props. As you guess, tricky shots are so-called because uh, they're tricky and not so easy to take. For a shot of a liquid escaping from a bottle, Simon had to drill a hole in the bottom of the bottle. Then uh, he connected compressor to it quickly supply air of it. Pressure squeezed liquid out of the bottle through the neck. This is not the first time, by the way, he has created such solutions for my shootings, for which he had a great respect. We made some rehearsal attempts. The cork flew wildly and pressure of the liquid was too strong, which I didn't like. But they haven't picked up the necessary ratio of the liquid in the bottle and the supplied pressure. Greed began to blow with necessary intensity. And somewhere in the seventh attempt, we took the necessary take. Well, there is actually a lot of uh, good takes. I just choose the best one in my opinion. But the take with the berries coming in the wave made us sweat. We decided not to bother with the special designings for this take and didn't build a ramp for dispersing water and jump machine for berries. For some reason I thought that everything would turn out uh, like this. Right on the set, through the berries uh, by the hand and through water from the tray. Well, from the 10th attempt, we'll definitely succeed. We didn't know that even with the 20th attempt, we won't succeed. It was difficult to synchronize and in one moment to make wave and flying berries through it. We either missing timing or the wave was uh, in the wrong place or the berries were flying in the wrong direction. So, it was awful. After several attempts, uh, the berries literally fell apart in my hands and I picked them and uh, threw them again, until they completely break off the trash. All the time I tried to throw the berries in a canopy so that uh, they flew more slowly and rolled in the pallet. And because of this, I completely missed. And finally, in the last attempt, I just threw the berries right in the Simon and it was success. So we are moving probably to the most asked question to any of my videos, which camera is taking. By the sneak peek you constantly already understood that I shoot this video on the Fujifilm X-T4. 
Now I will explain why I choose this camera. To begin with, it can shoot 240 frames per second in 200 megabits. And uh, that was the main setting in this camera for me. Yes, this camera can shoot true 4K DCI 60 frames per second with a recording speed of 200 megabits long GOP with dynamic range of 12 stops in F-Log. Well, you understand, or if you're not, to the hell with it. Of course, X-T4 can record 400 megabits all inter, but for 4K only 30 frames per second. Well, in this shooting, the balance of the max value of frames per second and image quality is important for me. That's why long GOP uh, quite satisfied me. By the way, I didn't immediately grab this camera and uh, rush to shoot this Summersby video. Previously, I tested uh, it on real people, no matter how creepy it sounds. I got out with friends to nature and shot them in uh, various settings on XT4. Appreciated the color rendering quality. Thus, uh, our sapling sharpness and various minor uh, nuances worse. I also tested autofocus, which pleasantly surprised and pleased me. Because I'm a boring filmmaker, I don't accept autofocuses and work only with manual focus using full focus. But in this case, I could completely relax and trust the tracking autofocus. It tracks faces, eyes, uh, tracks the selected focus areas, finger tap on the display and it focuses where you need. In general, it clearly worked out. Also, this insanely cool new matrix stabilization made it possible to shoot on hands with max smoothness. And by the way, the display plays. Now it's flipping and spinning in all directions. You can shoot uh, at any angle. It reminded me of the good old GH5, but this is a thing of the long past. Well, gentlemen from Sony, can you like this? Or maybe like this? Uh, no, you can't. Okay, we are so serious and we don't hate anyone or bullying. This camera also has a super fast rolling shutter, only 17 milliseconds, which is faster than FS7. And 7S2 is even more so. How is it, Sony? It's time to think about something. For those who are not in the know, the rolling shutter is the speed of the reading of the image from the camera line by line. The faster it reads, poles and trees will be less bent. What? Yes, that's what. For me, this thing was also important because I will shoot at 240 frames per second and fast moving objects in the frame, so I didn't need extra distortion and wobbling. In general, according to this uh, specification, XT4 suited me and I took it to this project. Well done, Fujifilm. I have two lenses for this camera, for the X-mount system. These are 60-55 and 50-140, both with a 2.8 aperture from the XF zoom line and 50-140 also with optical stabilization. I checked them both out on a pretest. I like them. Large bright lenses and heavy metal jackets. In general, it inspires confidence. Well, on the shot itself, I used only 60-55 lens and shot all the takes at 55 mils. I set up the light based on my own artistic wishes. I wanted to leave this product in a low key and emphasize the silhouettes of the bottles. So, uh, in the opening and closing takes, I decided to play with the light and turn on, turn off the key and trim light sources. And so the story happened that uh, the beginning of the video we declare a product from dark silhouettes and in the end we say goodbye to it uh, in a reverse. The key light works through the diffuser from reflector and the rim was also soft, but already through the soft box. And on the background uh, a third source with a Fresnel lens made a little spot in the center. I just wanted the background to be lit uh, unlively and a brighter spot in the center to create an emphasis uh, the focus of the viewer attention on uh, our product. In general, everything is pretty easy. The most important thing for me uh, wasn't to intercept the frame uh, so that the main idea and presentation of the video in low key would be preserved. 
Once again, I was convinced that equipment you are using is not important. The idea matters and how it can be implemented. I was lucky that in this shoot I was able to gather around me people who helped me in this. Each went about his own business and solved his individual tasks. And as a director and cinematographer, I just saw the picture that I want to get but the result and set the whole team to the desired result. Well, the picture itself already depended only on the correct settings in the camera and the exposed lighting sources. If you watched this video until this moment, then it was interesting to you and I hope that you stop by to see more about how to shoot beautiful and expensive promotional videos. So, follow this channel, hit the bell and I will know that I share my knowledge and experience uh, not in vain and you need it. Almost forgot, I launched my personal website generousbegov.com where I started an hour online course of food and tabletop shooting. So, let's get out of your quarantine and start studying. Otherwise, the season of advertising shootings has already begun. And you haven't learned anything new. In general, I hope that I will be able to create a small film community where together we can learn something new in video production and create cool projects. It's a wrap. See you next time, my dear filmmaker.